anyway, I make it uh, 20 minutes after, well, whatever hour it is where you are. Um, <laughs> so please uh, give a big, warm NDC welcome to Adam and Val, who are going to be giving us IoT solution recipes. The stage is yours. Awesome. Thanks, Dylan. And thanks, everyone, for joining us here uh, at NDC Sydney, where we're super excited to be here virtually. We're actually coming from Brisbane, so uh, we couldn't make it to Sydney, obviously. Um, but, um, yeah, we're here to share and talk about our IoT solution recipes and going beyond your first slice of Raspberry Pi. Um, so the first IoT customer that Val and I worked on together was actually a really large engineering company. They came to us and they built this proof of concept. They had a Raspberry Pi and a temperature sensor, and they were super excited, and they wanted to deploy temperature sensors all around the country. And they're amazed at just how easy it was to take a sensor and put it on a Raspberry Pi and then feed all this data up into the clouds. So in a few hours, they'd gone together and the devs had built this thing. And they'd also built a completely unfounded expectation around the complexity of IT solutions. That project actually never made it past the prototype, you know, despite buying from all areas of their business and a really skilled development team. Yeah, that's right. And that's very interesting, Adam, because on the other hand, I have recently worked with another customer of mine, which is a government agency, and they were looking to supplement a set of sensors that cost around $20,000 uh, with a cheaper set of sensors. And the team was as environmental scientists and data scientists that did not, were not developers. Um, so basically the project was quite successful and they're now actually expanding their use cases to a lot of other um, IIT projects, for example, managing occupancy of the building due to the COVID current restrictions. Um, so, and they also expanding to an other um, range of different use cases. And that's what really what we want to talk about today is we want to go through and we've worked on lots of different, you know, large scale enterprise IIT projects. And we want to talk about what we've seen that worked and then what that we've seen that hasn't. And then, you know, help you make IoT solutions, you know, kind of focus for the enterprise that can go all the way to production. I'm Adam Stevenson. I work for Microsoft as an Azure specialist. Uh, my job is to work with state governments, financial institutions and large commercial customers and help them architect and deploy solutions in Azure. Cool, and my name is Valeria Savenko, you can call me Val, and I'm part of the Fast Track for Azure team working at Microsoft based in sunny Brisbane, and I help customers deploy Azure solutions focusing on IT and AI workloads. I'm a techie at heart, so I did um, electrical engineering degree, so that's my huge passion for IT, uh, and I'm looking forward to presenting today. It's my first time in DC, so I'm super excited, um, and yeah, let's just get started. So what is IoT and why are we even here? So IoT, the way I think about it, and I like splitting into sort of three buckets. And uh, if, that, if you've done IoT before, you might have seen the slide, but it goes into things, insights, and actions. So things are your devices. And I've worked with a range of customers that use this tiny small microcontroller you're familiar with, like ESP32 board, uh, two large uh, enterprise-ready production gateways that are running IoT edge workloads in factories. Uh, and then the insights is kind of the gold of IoT, right? So what sort of data are you gathering from those um, devices and what sort of insights are you driving it? Because then they define what actions you're going to then have and um, act upon them. So, for example, if you have a train that is um, or a wind turbine of some sort that is spitting out a lot of data, you want to collect the data and understand when would it be the best time to maintain uh, or can you, maybe you can predict some failures within the turbine and understand the downtime. Um, so this is kind of the power of um, IoT. Awesome. So um, we all know that IoT is transforming the way people live and work, and I'm sure, I think, Dylan, you have um, a use case that you're playing around with IoT and a Raspberry Pi Zero. So, um, and IoT goes you know, beyond smart devices that you use every day, and it's revolutionizing the way companies do businesses. So allowing them to become faster, smarter, and more efficient. Um, so they're adopting IoT as part of their um, culture change to optimize their productivity and secure their environment. So some of the use cases that you've seen on the slide, and I've personally worked with some of those. So for example, the healthcare um, tracking inventory and remote, remote patient monitoring. And actually the very first demo that I built, remember my heart rate monitor sensor that I built? <laughs> Um, I took the project that I did at university, which was um, electrodes, you plug in, like you put it on your body and then you plug it into the Raspberry Pi and I could see my ECG wave. So that was pretty cool. And um, another use case, for example, manufacturing, 
um, around compliance um, using my IAM models running on the edge in factories. Uh, and for example, in retail, that would be your supply chain and connected logistics. Awesome. So, but to get started, we thought it would be a good idea to maybe give a story or two um, to you folks on the call to sort of showcase some of the local customer stories um, that we've seen and uh, partially been part of. So, for example, Downer. So, Downer Rail is making 340 million journeys um, possible every year. And the team was looking up to the water fleet here locally in Sydney, you're familiar with it, um, and to make sure that the trains are running effectively, safely, because it is very busy suburban part of Sydney. So their goal was to make sure that the customers get on trains every day safely and reliably, and the trains are clean uh, and on time. So the Downer team is getting around 30,000 signals from each train every 10 minutes, and they want to turn the data into insights because it is gold for them. Because um, that's a phenomenal amount of data. That, that, that is right. That's a good point, Adam. Um, and they built a a platform using Azure IT sort of services called DNA. How cool is that? So it's like having a blood pressure reading uh, about the train, telling you about the health of the train. Um, so that would enable them to predict uh, when the train has to go into maintenance, um, to predict downtime, maybe the when is due for cleaning, so that the trains are always available to bring people around um, Sydney always, and they're always on time. Awesome. And the other one is quite a recent one, uh, and we actually um, looked up that truck that you see on the picture and how massive is that. So it is a um, customized BHP uh, and they were tested as full force during the pandemic. Um, the team at BHP was locked down in Perth around 1,300 kilometers away from site with a Kamatsu Ultra Class whole truck. How cool is the name? Yeah, and they're massive. <laughs> and they're massive, um, as you can see by the tires on the, on the picture. Um, and they had to install maintenance sensors on those trucks for the work uh, for the worker safety. So they had a dash tool which have a lot of IC sensors feeding into gauges for maintenance people to read on their mobile devices, which means the team at BHP can easily stay a safe distance away from the truck while getting their job done. However, they've experienced a small challenge installing those sensors because they were in Perth and the Sparky and the Fiddler were on site. And it is quite a common scenario with a lot of IIT customers. Um, so BHP used HoloLens and set of Azure IAT services to empower women and men at the front line of the business um, to make sure that BHP operations um, some uh, smarter, safer, and more reliable and better. So even though, so there are a couple of great use cases that we've worked on where the companies were really successful at implementing IAT, but that's not what we always see. And that's kind of the, the example that I started out with. Um, is, is we see nearly a third of projects fail in the proof of concept stage. Now, you know, there's a lot of reasons why things don't get part of prototype, but 30, so of those 30% of projects that fail at POC, 33 of them fail because of the high cost of scaling. And now when we're talking about scaling in IoT, we're not talking about, when we're talking about scaling in web, we're talking about putting more web servers on. When we're talking about scaling in IoT, we're talking about the ability to go from a small number of devices to a large number of devices. In a POC in the office, you might actually manually copy a connection string onto a device. But that's obviously not going to work when you're dealing, rolling out solutions that have thousands and thousands of devices. Um, so scaling is by far the number one reason that we're seeing, seeing things fail at POC. Beyond that, we're seeing the business-driven reasons are the next most common reasons why things, why projects don't proceed. And often IT projects are suggested and pocked out without a clear understanding of what the real business case is and the ROI that the business is going to see from the project. So there are two big ones where we see problems, um, problems occurring. So as we talked about on the previous slide, scaling is the number one challenge. Another challenge we see is that in a single organisation, there's often diverse devices and solution ecosystems. So some, some you know, solutions might use LoRaWAN, other ones are going to be off-the-shelf vendor solutions. Some they're working with them, building their own, they're working and building their own microcontrollers. But an effective IT solution really needs to bring all of these into a single solution for management and really getting that aggregation of data to generate insights. Another challenge that we see in a lot of organisations and a lot of customers is they literally just don't have any developers. So the businesses out there and they, they actually identify a need for a solution, but then they don't have anyone to build it. Um, 
And the other big challenge we see kind of is a two-part challenge, and that's, you know, silos in the business. Um, we see that kind of two ways. You know, one issue we have is that in organisations where central IT go and build a, an IoT solution and they say, this is going to be our IoT solution for our organisation, and they build something that they think is going to be useful, and we all know what happens when developers go in and build stuff without consulting with the business, um, but then they go and land it in production, and then often it's a usability, a, we call it a, U, it's a UX experience for IoT, um, but it, meet, it doesn't meet the requirements of the business, and they have or there's challenges in the environment that IT don't understand, so that the project's not successful. It's a very good point. Um, the user experience is quite a big part um, for our customers that we've seen. Uh, sometimes folks don't really think about productionizing. You know, they make sure that it's scalable. Um, it can scale to different regions across you know the world, uh, but not so much scaling to support. Um, user experience by connecting all of those devices to Azure. Um, so it's a really point um, that we would like to whoop, sort of bring across. And sometimes that's as simple as the physical form factor of the device or whatever they're giving to the people that can't be used in the scenarios that they're supposed to be using it. Um, and then we've seen the issue the other way around as well. And we've seen this many times where the business ident like the business units out in the field, they identify a need for an IT solution. Um, but central IT doesn't have the capacity or the willingness to support them. So they just go off and do it, and the business goes and does it for themselves without any central coordination. And what invariably happens in that scenario is that a few years down the track, central IT realises, oh, look at all these dark solutions that we've got out there, and now we need to do something to bring it all back in a coordinated way, because unless we do that, we can't generate those, put all the, all the data together and generate those insights. Awesome. So we thought it would be good to show real examples that myself and Adam have worked with. Uh, we're going to kind of cover three, we're not going to kind of, we, we will cover three um, use cases and three customers that we worked with recently. So uh, customer story number one is the Department of Environmental, um, of Environment and Science, and they had environmental monitoring use case. Uh, so as you know, a few months ago, um, Australia had bushfires, um, so they were really interested in connecting CO2, uh, data, dust, and, and other sensor reading. Uh, and sort of what they were looking for to achieve is to have a simple capability to, um, to easily connect um, new sensors and IoT devices, which means that the Department of Environmental Science can not only easily upskill its business groups uh, and collect the data, and the data is available, but the range of opportunities that IAT platform can bring is very diverse. And that was said by one of the scientists um, in the team, Daniel, brought, uh, that we worked with, uh, and he's built out the solution himself, and he wasn't a developer. Yeah, which is amazing. Which is amazing. Um, so what they were trying to achieve is the ability to go into a portal, purchase a sensor, uh, stand up an environment, connect the sensor, get the data, um, and then maybe export the data for further processing, for example, using Azure Stream Analytics for anomaly detection uh, without really the need to provision all of the services themselves. Um, so that was their goal. And they're an interesting customer because they already were doing IoT. This is a department that had $30,000 sensors distributed around. So they already, they're, they're data scientists, they understand big data, they know how to draw insights, they've got $30,000 sensors feeding them data. But what they wanted to do is they wanted to augment their really expensive, massively high quality sensors with a whole swathe of cheaper sensors, and then they could take that broader landscape in, in, into consideration to make decisions like, where should we go and stick our next $30,000 sensor, or have we got the ones that we've got in the right places, and are they giving us the right insights? That's right. So. What they, they use a certain set of technology, um, Dan, Daniel in particular, which we're going to go into now. So um, for the next couple of slides, we'll just do a quick level set so that we are all on the same page. Uh, and then we're going to go into the demo because we're feeling super brave for this talk <laughs> and we have some live demos happening. Um, so IAT in general, and this is what a lot of our customers are experiencing, have very tight coupling between the devices in the cloud. So let's say if you're a device developer and you're developing for the device, building the firmware, you know, it's going to um, get this type of sensors, uh, it's going to get that information, and then you are also a cloud developer that is building maybe a web application to visualize the data. You have to be involved in each other's projects because it is tightly coupled. So the cloud dev needs to understand what the um, device dev is doing. 
Um, and it is quite a similar concept uh, was back in the days when you wanted to connect a peripheral to your, let's say, Windows, like a mouse, you had to install the drivers uh, on your machine to be able to make that connection possible, whereas now it takes your seconds to connect a mouse to your um, PC. Because we use plug and play. Because we use plug and play. That's right, Adam. Um, do you mind oh, doing the sorry. next slide? So um, the concept that we are covering today, and this is something that Dan has used with his devices, is called IT plug and play. So what IT plug and play doing is as part of the first connection with the cloud is also passing its uh, JSON DL model, which is called JSON definition language model, which defines the capability of that device. So for example, I can collect that type of set of telemetry, telemetry. Um, I can have those sort of commands that you can send from the cloud and control me, uh, and I have those type of properties. Um, all that you need to do on the cloud side is just to decode the JSON, um, JSON model, and we're all familiar with JSON, uh, so it's nothing um, really tricky, and it just makes that integration a lot easier and smoother and accelerates the process. So just the same way that we can go and buy a new mouse and we don't have to install the drivers on our PC anymore, we can plug our mouse in and then it goes and gets the capabilities of our mouse and then our mouse just works. That's correct. So this is the same way now we can go and buy IoT plug and play devices and we, we connect them to our IoT network. And this isn't just a, a Microsoft thing. This is a, and then there's a standard that device, IoT devices have a device capability model on the device. Yeah. So we can go and plug our device into an IoT network and it, the device will then broadcast its capabilities so the network you're connecting it into already knows how to use it. That's so right. That's pretty awesome. I know. And let's look at some of the benefits uh, that it brings. And I know maybe some of you on the call are developers as part of the organization. Maybe you are uh, a developer at a vendor that are actually designing the devices. If you are, I would be happy to connect because we need more hardware and more cool devices out there. But what are some of the benefits um, that you can get out of that uh, capability um, for developers? Uh, it dramatically reduces and simplifies the effort needed to build software both for the devices and the cloud because you don't have to be involved in each other's projects. Um, if you're a customer or partner, you can leverage the large ecosystem of devices that already exists with IoT plug-and-play, and this is what Dan has done. So he went out and he purchased already IoT plug-and-play compatible device. And if you're a device provider, you can empower other developers and other organizations to use the devices that you have enabled to be IoT plug-and-play. Pretty awesome. And um, awesome. So we thought, yep, is there a question? Cool, we'll just go with it. Um, so another part of the um, architecture that Dan um, sort of had, he had Azure IoT Central. And I know we have a lot of developers on the call, uh, so you might not have seen because IoT Central is fully software as a service uh, managed service that is built on top of all of the Azure IoT set of services. So they're all kind of under the hood uh, and you are basically abstracted from all the underlying infrastructure, which is quite beneficial for Dan um, because he didn't really have developer expertise uh, and IoT Central has all the capabilities from ability to connect the devices to the cloud, remotely monitor them, manage them um, and send commands as well. So with that being said, let's just jump into the demo. Sneak peek into the next demo. <laughs> awesome. So, IT Central. Um, you can come in, uh, navigate to azure.microsoft.com slash IT Central. You can build the solution by clicking build. And it brings you here uh, into the main portal. As you can see, I didn't have to go into um, Azure portal. Didn't have to provision anything. Um, it just uh, stands alone as a web application. You can come in under my apps. So, I will have a few apps here. Um, present um, in DC Sydney and so on and so forth, you can click uh, add a new application. And what we have done to accelerate some of you guys is that Microsoft have put together a few templates, a few samples uh, based on different um, industries. So for example, for energy, we have solar panel monitoring or smart meter monitoring, which is quite um, an important set of tools and technology for the given state of the environment. Uh, we have health, healthcare, uh, continuous patient monitoring, and also for government, things like water consumption monitoring, water quality monitoring. 
And it's probably worth calling out that, so I use these um, to save me having to go and build a whole custom IoT solution, but I use them just to kickstart me. So I can, I'll, I can go in and just choose a custom app and go and configure it all. But what I often find is I'll be wanting to do a solution and I'll find one of those other solution starters that is vaguely related and I'll use it to give me out of the box dashboards and configuration and then I'll just go and customize it for what I need. That's right. And another point to point out, which is something, another point to point out, another, um, I've been now working with the Azure IoT Central product team uh, and they're putting a lot of research uh, into making IT Central the sort of platform the customers go to, not just for proof of concept, but for the real world applications. Um, so they're investing a lot of time and effort into building it out, uh, which is really awesome to see. Um, but let's just have a quick browse um, through an application that I already have. Can I do this? Oh, another sneak peek into the demo. <laughs> Awesome. So um, I'm currently in my solar panel monitoring dashboard. As you can see, I got it out of the box. I didn't have to go and build a provision or anything. Um, I have a few commands that I can trigger from the board. So if you're running Azure SDK um, onto your device and you are compatible with, um, let's say, um, and you have some logic on your device to be able to read digital twins uh, and any updates to the twins, you'll be able to trigger some commands and some updates on the device, for example, restart or update the threshold temperature. Um, you also can have a little dashboard for visualizing, you know, energy reading and temperature. So if you're an operator, um, you can just jump in and have an overall look of your system. Um, on the devices, let's say, let's click into the solar panel one. Hopefully it has generated some data. Overview. Cool. So as you can see under the overview, that will be for a specific solar, solar panel device. Um, you can have pro device readings. Uh, so what is the overall energy reading, efficiency, um, nominal voltage, power reading. So this kind of the sensors data that the device is generating. Um, you can also send commands from this dashboard for the particular device. So for example, deactivate, update the version. Um, and this is quite an important thing to point out as part of the overall device life cycle, you need to make sure you're gonna update the firmware remotely without the need to be present with the device. Um, that's part of the scale sort of conversation that we are having today. You can also set up quick rules and alerts. Um, so, you know, aggregate data over, let's say, one month um, or over the couple of minutes uh, and send an alert if the temperature threshold is increasing above a certain value. Uh, so that could be very useful for your um, car scenario, Adam. And that's, and that's exactly what I'm doing with my, so automating my four wheel drive solution. I've got one of these, I've customized it, and I've literally just taken three sensors and installed them in my car and have it streaming to this, to this dashboard. I didn't have to write any code, and I've got a full solution that's monitoring my fridge temperature, the internal temperature of the car, and my battery levels. So, you know, no code, configuring devices, and streaming up into a, a fully, you know, a, a production ready um, portal that actually can manage my devices, provide me the data and the insights. Awesome. Cool. And then the next part here is we, we understand that you might have a large variety of different devices uh, that will have different connectivity options and they will be sending different types of data. So to manage and achieve that, um, there is a feature which is called device templates that you can create based on different types of devices that you will have. Um, and you can come in here, and whether it's an edge device, an IoT device, you can create a, um, a device template for your specific set of devices. All right, let me just do a quick, um, so we don't swap between the screen, a quick high-level architecture of the solution that Dan has put together. Uh, it doesn't really get any deeper because, as we mentioned, IT Central is software as a service solution that abstracts you from all of the underlying services. Uh, and then we're using IT plug and play capabilities on the device to just share its capability model um, once it connects to the IT Central. Um, the other part of the solution, what he is doing after um, the IT Central, is that IT Central has capability for the continuous data export. So you can export your data for hot path analytics or for cold path analytics for, let's say, persistent storage. Yep. Awesome. So now, let's actually do the demo. So we are seeing a little setup here of all my devices. Um, I've got a few Raspberry Pis. 
and then I have this little tiny device which is an MX chip. I'll just show it like this. Um, you can buy it, it's a development kit um, by Microsoft. It is IT plug and play. I will make it IT plug and play enabled. Uh, all that it has is that a few sensors um, on the device that are just streaming some, some data. And it's a great device if you want to get into something and you don't want to have to get a Raspberry Pi and put a whole lot of sensors on it. It comes with buttons, it comes with a whole lot of sensors, and it's a great way to actually proof of concept something that's actually going to go to production. So I've actually got multiple of these deployed um, in the nice little case in the car, which is well, one of the things that I'm using. Awesome. So now let's jump into the BIOS grade. Uh, so I have my solution that I will then be, be deploying to my device. It's just an Arduino board. Uh, and I'm using Azure IoT extension to be able to develop um, for that particular environment. So we are currently looking at the JSON um, DL document, which as we mentioned before, defines the capabilities of the device. So this is the document that then goes onto the device, which then talks to IoT plug and play. That's correct. Awesome. So under here, we see ID. Um, maybe I can zoom in a little bit even more. And that. We can see the ID for that particular model. So you might have, you might be developing for different type of sensors with different models. Um, so this is how you would define the particular model. And then the gold of these are the contents. So the contents actually define the capabilities of the device. So here I'm saying that it's going to be sending uh, temperature as a telemetry type, uh, humidity, pressure, uh, and you have two commands for start and stop. So now, if I go into my actual device code. So I was just going to say, so this is the, the, um, the capability model for this device. If I went and built my own device with my own controllers and built actions onto it, I could go and build my own capability model like that and then deploy that with my device. And that's how I'd go and make my own device plug and play. That's correct. So through this demo, we're going to show you guys how you would be able to do that yourself. Um, so then you can package it uh, and deploy it, and then maybe enable your other folks in the organizations to be able to use that device. So here I am uh, in the actual device code, um, and um, awesome. Uh, and under model ID, I am passing that model ID for my definition language um, file. As you can see, it's the same. And then what is important to note here is when I create a connection and this particular device is communicating with the cloud using MQTT protocol, I'm going to pass as part of that connection my model ID, which will then basically give uh, the cloud or whatever web application solution that I have my capabilities. So now let's navigate into IT Central. Awesome. And we will just create um, a device template. So the way IIT Central works is that you have to actually pre-upload the definition um, language model. Um, so if you're building for your own web application, you wouldn't really have to do that, but this is just how um, IIT Central is, is built. So we'll just have to upload exactly the same model that I, um, that I just showed in BS um, code. So I come in under device template, select a template, collect, click on device. So just jumping on that point again is that if we're using an IT um, plug and play device, you don't need to, it, it has it, it will send through its device capability to the system you're plugging it into. The reason we're manually importing it is because we're going into IoT Central and it's saying based on that capability, I'm going to go and create you graphs and dashboards and a whole lot of um, UI as well. So that's we're actually importing it, not so the device can talk to the system but so that we get all the nice UI around it. Yes, because you have to pre-configure as part of IT central visualizations um, and things like that. So I've now created a template. Um, I can go and import my capability model. I can select my PNP, get started JSON file. Upload, as you can see, it sort of pulled all of that information in. Let's go and see if I can add a view. So let's say I would like to look at the temperature humidity, pressure, and temperature. And I can add a tile. Um, you can also add a tile for commands. If you want to, let's say, maybe it's one at a time, if you want to um, start up a command from the dashboard itself. Uh, and I can save. 
and publish the model. Publishing model means that you're just publishing it within your own IoT Central application, so you can then connect the devices uh, and they should be good to go. Awesome. So now I'm going to my devices. So as you can see, I have now a um, device template ready. Let's just create an instance of the device. I'll call it MXG. Create. Awesome. Going to the MX chip. Now click connect. Um, just to sort of make it visually um, accessible to you guys, we are doing it the hacky way. So getting the connection string and uploading it manually. Um, so let me just do that real quick. Um, so I just need to give it the ID scope. So what we're doing now is going in and connecting the device to IoT Central. And this is something that we'll show later, which is this is one of those scale things we want to get away from. Um, but for this, you know, this the, for our beginning scenario, um, this is what we're doing to, to start with. Yeah. That's step one. And I'm using a program called, um, a package called uh, DPS Key Generator, which will generate the key for me um, under the hood. Then I got to climb. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> that should be copied. I now go back into my solution and let's now connect the device. So I'm going to first go and configure the device string. Connection string. Oops, I didn't copy. Awesome. You can see now it's hopefully ask me to configure it. Maybe I can just show what I'm doing, but it's nothing fancy. So, it's, so the Visual Studio Code UI is actually asking you to press two buttons at the same time, and that to, to confirm that we're connecting that device to the to IoT Central. Oh, and then I just come in here and I pull the device code. So now that we've made a connection between the device, um, we're now sending the code that she's got in the starter project to the device, and then that's the code that's going to execute on the device and send through that data to IT Central. That is correct. So now, as you can see, it is uploading. It's right there. We'll just give it a moment or two. And you can see I have customized my power brick with the Raspberry Pi logo. <laughs> And so there are walkthroughs that show how to do all of these things. So if, if you get an MX chip, it's so it literally takes this long to do and go and deploy. And we've got environment. So it was actually uh, so Dan started off using an MX chip, and we did this demo with him. And they went around their um, their building and they put temperature sent because there's a temperature sensor and a humidity sensor on the device, that was their initial POC is, can we go and we stream data into this and actually use this platform? Yep. So in, in, you know, literally in about 20 minutes, you can get one of these devices and actually have a platform up and going where you can start monitoring things like temperature and humidity, because that's a, a nice place to start. Um, and there's a whole lot of other demos out of the box that come with the MX chip. That's correct. And just important things to note here, um, we've obviously done this right now manually, Right, so we've gone, I have manually gotten the connection string and uploaded it. But in general, how you would do it is you would package it as binary with the connection string from the device provisioning service and upload that onto the device. And as remember, remember when we went into the device templates, there were a few feature device templates that you can choose from. And this is what Dan has done. So someone, a device vendor, has already certified their devices with IoT plug and play. They already uploaded the capability model. All you need to do is just to go, for example, to an Azure um, certified device catalog, choose device based on your connectivity options, hardware interfaces, um, maybe industries, maybe their specific factories um, and machineries, those factories that have their specific hardware, um, select the device and connect. This is what Dan has, has done. So let's just see if my device is now sending the data. As you can see, it started streaming the data. It works. So you can see now we've got humidity, and actually I'll be interested to know what the humidity and the temperature is, because we're in the office. 
and we got kicked out of here yesterday because the air conditioning wasn't working and it doesn't feel like it's they've necessarily fixed it. No, it's 30 degrees and I'm <laughs> pretty degrees. hot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. uh, Is that right? Yes. Yeah, it is 30 degrees. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So now, um, over to you, Adam. Right. Thanks, Val. And have a look at the day. So, you know, there's that's a really interesting use case at the Department of Environment and Science. Um, you know, they had da really smart guys, data scientists with no coding background, who wanted to go and expand their, to use IoT um, to actually complement their data sets, so they could uh, you know do more machine learning on on uh, the big data sets that they were using. Um, IoT plug and play enabled them to come in and go and get smart devices um, without any manual configuration. So they went to the, um, they went and they, they got the IoT plug and play from the IoT plug and play store. And there's a range of devices in there, and some of them are starter kits like the MX chip that are great for prototyping. But in there are the, the productionized, um, you know, ready to go into the field hardened I, um, hardware solutions. So he went and got those devices and deployed those devices. Um, IT Central is a full managed software as a service application that let him get up and going with the platform without needing to write any code. Um, and getting that device from that ecosystem of third, um, third party hardware providers um, saved him from going and needing to get custom devices built. And I see this happen all the time and it was the, actually the scenario with that engineering company is that the hardware is often the problem. Being, if you can go and find the hardware when the project starts and say, here is the piece of hardware that you can go and buy from somebody else, then you're halfway through to success. Often the scenario that where, where, where people come into trouble is that the, the hard, they, once you need to get your own hardware device made, you get into all sorts of strife once you need to productionize those devices. Um, and the IT projects can't succeed without IT. Whether you're using a SaaS surface like IoT Central or whether you're um, going and writing code, you've really got to get the IoT, the, the IT team involved, um, whether it's about provisioning the service. But often the key to it is, is that um, you, you want them to be able to provide the additional data capabilities that you need to be able to derive the insights from, your, from, the, from the sensors that you've got streaming data. Um, we're going to roll on to one of our other um, use cases that we've, we've worked together on, um, and this is Brisbane City Council. So they are really, they're really committed to developing IoT, actually to make the city better, and actually to improve the infrastructure that's around town, and improve safety, efficiency, cost effectiveness, um, and the quality of the, their built environments. They don't have a big development team. Um, and they haven't had an internal, they've got a really strong integration capability, but they don't have a, they didn't have an internal IoT capability inside their central organisation. So what, so what happened is, is that the actual different parts of the, the business went out and just started standing up their own IoT solutions. And so then they kind of did a bit of a check and went, oh, we've got more than 50 IoT solutions out in the field, often solving the same use case, but they've gone and bought off the shelf products. Um, and there's a number of different challenges with that. A, that these different business units, are, are, there's a high cost of managing, you know, a whole lot of different vendors running their own different solutions out in the field. Um, you know, they're all using different devices. The ecosystem around it is really complex. But from the, from the organisation's point of view, the real, the real problem with it is, is you know, you might have four different vendors all doing, or four different bicycle counting or pedestrian counting solutions around the city, but you're not, you don't have a central data store where you can actually start putting that data together and gaining insights. So they came to us and started talking around this particular use case and this particular problem and said, what can we do to make it better? Um, and awesome. Um, so Laura Wayne, so they've used a wide range um, LoRa network, and I'm sure some of you guys have heard of it. Uh, so this is the um, protocol for wide area network, and it is designed for very low power devices. 
And the idea is you have your nodes, uh, which are communicating using that frequency to your gateways. And then the gateways are then connected to either Ethernet or via other uh, network means to be able to then transmit the data. The challenge with that comes is that the data then is then uh, published to, let's say, other cloud, like the Things Network or the Particles. Uh, or we also have other customers that, for example, borrowing some of the devices from other vendors that also come with their own data management platform. So as you can imagine, with different with 50 different use cases, sending the data in all the different formats, uh, Brisbane City Council had to find a way to aggregate and put the data in the right format before it even lands um, into, into Azure. So um, what comes here is that um, they used IT Central Device Bridge, which is an open source solution that connects to Sigfox, Particle, and the Things Network uh, from your um, other applications. Uh, so they, you know, they, it's, it's very powerful to use if, you, let's say, you have like a little tracking device uh, that is using LoRa, streaming the data into the Things um, Network. And then from the things that work, you can push the data into IT Central Bridge, and then from the IT Central Bridge, the data can land uh, in the um, in, to IIT Central. So this is sort of the high-level architecture that Brisbane City Council has put together. And just important part to point this out is on the left-hand side, you have the variety of different ways your devices can connect into IIT Central. So they might do it via the LoRa gateway. Uh, they might be just borrowed from a vendor and just uh, expose a point that you can call to get the data, or some of them might connect uh, directly connect into the IIT Central. Yep. Thanks. Awesome. Um, so before we jump into the the demo, so some of the learnings that we took away is that IIT Central allows you rapid provisioning of applications with no developer um, required. So for Brisbane City Council, because they had to stand up 50 different applications, that would be a lot of development time required to build all the dashboards to visualize the data. Um, IT Sense from Bridge allows provisioning devices hosted in other clouds uh, with different various management platforms like Six Particles, the Things Network, um, and you can also export the data from the IT Central up into the Azure Data Services for analytics uh, and other um, for cross-use um, sort of insights uh, over the data. It's been a really interesting project for me because having the, instead of going and building an IT solution for someone, it was them coming to us and going, we've already got 50 solutions, but we want a centralised solution that lets them keep doing what they're doing, but gives us the capabilities that we want. So that ability to say, we're going to take existing systems that are in the field and then use the IoT bridge to say, let's take whether they're using the Things Network or Sigfox or whatever they're already using, let's take the data that they're generating and stream it as well using the IT Central bridge from whatever they're already using into IT Central so we could have a, a centralised IoT solution that then they could pump the data out into a data state and actually get actionable insights from. I thought that was a it makes it a really interesting, a really interesting story. Um, the other thing I really like about this use case is that the that the, the Brisbane City Council actually provides a free LoRa network across town. So there's um, there's six locations across Brisbane that they're actually providing LoRa gateways. So from home, I've actually got I've got um, uh, moisture sensors in a couple of my pot plants um, and they're all saying that they're dry but the nice thing about it is is that I don't have to go it doesn't have to use my home network it can actually send signals directly over the Brisbane LoRa network back into the Azure cloud um, so you know the network covers it's really great the network covers about 200 square kilometers of Brisbane um, and in two months of operating they actually have received up to 120,000 messages from IT devices um, so Council's actually got 10 proof of concepts in the field at the moment using this public LoRa network. Um, so that's pretty amazing. And just uh, to, uh, to point out here, if you are part of the organization and you don't want to really invest into the gateways, because the gateways that sell a little bit pricey, uh, so you can leverage the free network that is either done, if, let's say if you're based in Brisbane, but Brisbane City Council, or I know other councils around the world have also... Um, Gold Coast has a paid Gold one, Coast. Sydney has free LoRa across the network. So if you are getting into IT and you want to be able to send your signals, it's definitely worth looking at getting into LoRa. Yes, that's right. So, awesome. Let's now jump into the demo. So, 
uh, because once again, I didn't want to spend over a thousand dollars on the gateway, and I wanted to show you sort of the end-to-end -end prices. I purchased two pie hats for my Raspberry Pis, so you can get them from Pi Supply, and all the demo cost under five hundred dollars, which only just the gateway could be over a thousand. Um, so you can get them from that website, um, and I think I'll just start sharing. So we're using a Raspberry Pi Laura for our Laura hat. Um, but our customers are mostly using um, plug-and-play LoRa gateways that they buy from the, you know, that, that, um, that they're able to buy commercial versions of. So just to show that really quickly, as you can see there here, I'll just try them. It's they're pretty. It gets quite hot, so I put like double heat sink on it because it does get really hot as it's running from the Raspberry Pi. Draws a lot of current. Um, so I have it here, and this is my note. I've also printed. Uh, Ras uh, what are they called, um, sort of casing, as you can see, kind of customized for NDC Sydney, um, which is pretty awesome. Thought I would share it, but obviously to show you guys, um, they are out of the box. So let's have a look, um, number one, at my gateway. So this is my gateway. Um, if you're using the same sort of hardware that I'm using, it comes with its own uh, management platform. Um, so you can see my gateway is running. Uh, it's getting a little bit hot, but that's okay. And I can remotely uh, forward the messages to my gateway in from. I've also connected my gateway to my Things Network um, application. So if you're familiar with the Things Network, um, that's how it looks. You can come in, click on the gateway, and you can see one is Bell Storage. Bell's Laura Gateway, I'm very creative with names. Um, it is connected, and if you're in Australia, we're using 150 megahertz frequency. Um, so just make sure you check that before you buy the kit, because I've made that mistake when I was just learning. Um, and as you can see, sort of the area where it is located, and it is currently connected and live, which is what I want to see. Um, awesome. So now, Now, if you go into my Raspberry Pi, so this is me just an SSH shell, um, and I'm connecting to my Raspberry Pi, and I have a very simple code written um, using the gateway, um, sort of the Pi hat that I use for my node. Um, and as you can see, it's very simple. I'm just setting, hey, the frequency is um, 115 megahertz. Um, I've created an instance of that device in the Things Network, which I will show shortly. And all I'm doing is that I'm just joining whatever gateway is around me. I don't care. Anything that can just forward my packets um, into the cloud. And I'm just randomly generating some, some data. So I'll just kick things off. I'll just let it run. Um, and then under Applications, I have created Application Device. And this is my device, which is called just a sample device. As you can see, um, you have to set sort of the activation method. So over the year, um, this is what I'm using to send the packets. Um, and I'm grabbing you know, the device ID, the application ID, and the app key, because I want to make sure that the data is encrypted um, as it's traveling across. So let's see if it has started sending the data. There you go. It generated one message. Um, let's now come and see uh, devices, data. Um, and as you can see, it is sending through, what is it, 1008, um, and it is sending the packets, um, temperature 28. Uh, we can see the same on the gateways as well. So this is my gateway, and because data is encrypted, I cannot actually see what the data is, uh, what's, what sort of the data that is being sent. Um, so if you, let's say, have a, your own um, gateway setup, you won't be able to, to decode that, the data, so you can open it to public use case as well. Um, so you can see it's just sending through the packages. Then onto the IIT Central gateway, I'm sorry, onto the IIT Central uh, bridge, which is just an Azure function uh, that has been um, written that exposes a HTTP endpoint. So while it's loading, let's just go back into the Things Network, um, into my applications and into my application under integrations. So here you can set up where do you want the data to be posted. So in this case, I have just set up a simple HTTP integration and I've given it my endpoint from my function. So I'm just going to post the data to my function. 
What function is doing, um, number one, it is converting the message from the LoRa into the right format that can be digested by IT Central because the format a little bit vary. Uh, and another part is using Key Vault um, in order to connect to a particular IT Central application. So when you provision IT Central Bridge, you need to give what the key to the specific IT Central application because we want to make sure that connection is secure. And then if I now just go back into my IT Central under my apps, NDC Sydney. And hopefully it will have some data. Ta -da! Okay, cool. It's sending through the data. We can come and look at the raw data because it's just aggregating um, because I have something else sending through the data. As you can see, it's sending temperature and telemetry. What is important to note here is in this case, I just simply transformed the message to be suitable and consumed by IT central application. But I think you can extend that scenario to different use cases. So maybe you need to transform the data uh, or maybe do some data manipulations. I think Azure Functions, given its scale, can scale to large amounts of sort of processing power to, um, to put your data into the right format before it even lands uh, in IT central. Awesome. And over to you, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Sorry. Okay. Thanks, Val. No problem. So, yeah, so that's a really interesting use case, and I think we're going to see more and more of that. Um, is that, you know, that the, the, one of the big challenges we see around productionizing IoT solutions is, you know, we talked about the challenges around the hardware. Um, and organizational challenges, but the network is a real challenge as well. And how do we communicate from our devices back to the cloud to actually store the data and then get those insights? And you know, we're, we're, we're seeing lots and lots of real world LoRa applications, especially over you know, highly distributed um, areas. Um, so it's definitely worth checking out. Um, and you know, the nice thing is, is using something like the Things Network it's a it's from a bit of a it has an open source feel it's a real if you want to get involved in the things network you can actually go and buy a gateway actually share your gateway when you when you provision a things network gateway it then allows everyone in your area to then leverage that gateway as well so it's a great and then so from the things network using the device bridge to then push data into IT central that's correct and um, i think i might be one of the first people who have ordered that type of hardware into Australia because I didn't really see a lot of samples online. So if you want to help me build out maybe a sample using that hardware, just, you know, connect with me on Twitter and then we can maybe collaborate on something so that other people can leverage. An open source project because it was actually finding the right signals, the, the, the right um, bandwidth to bandwidth, use was, yeah. was actually a real challenge. So there's been a whole lot of learnings around that. So follow Val and uh, get involved would be awesome. Um, so yeah, so once again with Brisbane City City Council, IST, IST Central really helped them in a low in a no developer scenario. That IoT bridge on uh, is on GitHub. It's an open source project that lets you take um, the provision devices using things like the Things Network or Particle and actually stream that data into IoT Central, so you get that one one source of truth where you can then go and run all of your analytics from your data platform. Because really, that data and actionable insights is what IoT is all about. Look, thanks for joining us uh, and, to and talking about the next steps with your IoT projects and getting them all the way to production. Um, I just wanted to recap on a, a, a few of our, our key thoughts from today, and it's that IoT doesn't always sit with IT. If you want your project to be successful, you know, cross-organisational buy-in is absolutely essential. Um, IT insights, I keep saying it over and over, but it's about the actionable insights that come from the data that's gathered from the solution. So the real value um, in any IT solution is from having a really mature data platform. Um, IT POCs often don't reflect the complexities of production IT solutions. 
Um, we hope we've highlighted some of those complexities today and shows you, and show, as well as showing you ways to mitigate them. Um, getting in the right IT hardware is often a big challenge. Um, you need to be looking at this from the very first stages of the project. There's no point you know, getting some test devices, building out a full POC, coming to production and realising that the hardware is the absolute blocker. Um, and using IT plug and play hardware can really help you get to production quickly. Um, check out IT Central, it allows for a free enterprise, a, a, a code free uh, a production enterprise IoT platform. Look, we're going to hang around, take some questions on Slack, or you can come off mute. But uh, thank you very much for joining us. Bye, see you all. <laughs>